This project is a bit broad, so it touches a lot of different things. First of all, I assume that you guys know what malaria is, right? Yeah, okay. I want you to have two things in mind about malaria. Okay, the first of all, you all know, and is that malaria kills. Okay, malaria, actually it's not just that it kills, it devastates. It's something that goes super quick between the people and you die super quick. It destroys families, it destroys villages, and even I've heard this horrible thing that people in Africa used to tell themselves that kids doesn't get a soul until the, until the age of five. And they say that so they don't feel bad if a kid dies. So that's, that's actually horrible. And yeah, every 59 seconds a kid dies of malaria. So yeah, it's, a, it's a big problem. As you can see, malaria is spread worldwide, okay? Most in the tropical countries. But nowadays, with the global warming, half of the population of the world is in areas where malaria is suitable to be. So that's a big problem. Actually, now south of Italy, south of Spain, would be would have the, the climate conditions to have malaria. So it, it's a problem. It's still not there, luckily. But yeah, we we, ha we have to be careful. As you know, it's transmitted by a mosquito, and there's five kinds of malaria. The good thing is that only one of the kinds is the one that kills people. The bad thing is that this kind is the one that is present in 75% of the cases. So there's a lot, a lot of problems. So and the symptoms are, that's also another problem. Symptoms of malaria are really standard symptoms. You have fever, you have headache, you have articulation pain. So that's something that if you go to a doctor, they will have no clue what you have. That's why you need to be diagnosed. diagnosed. The, diagnosed the diagnosis is a bit tricky. So first of all, uh, there's like this diagnosis with paper strips. It's super cheap, super easy. You just need a, blood, a sample of blood like this, and you put the, the paper. And depending on the color, you, you know uh, if you have malaria or not. The problem is the specificity, specificity of this is horrible. It goes as low as 50%. So that, that, that's shit. That's literally shit. The good way to test malaria is with a microscope. So you need a microscope and a person to look through the microscope. The thing, it's, it's super accurate. You just need a, a sample of blood. You put some substance to remove the hemoglobin. So then you can see different layers. So you can see through the different layers of blood to check the parasites. And the problem, it's obvious. You need someone to check the microscope all the time. And if you have a village that has 2,000 people and they start having malaria, you have to check them all every day. So you cannot do that. The big problem with malaria is that people are not dying because malaria is a difficult illness. They are dying because they are not getting properly diagnosed. So that, that, that's the biggest problem. If you get malaria and they detect you in the next three days, it's super easy to cure it. It's super, super easy. I actually had a friend who had malaria a couple of weeks ago, and she got antibiotics for two or three days, and she was perfect, perfectly fine afterwards. And yeah, the second thing that I want you to have in mind is malaria is curable. You just need a quick diagnosis. That's the, the key thing. So people are dying because they don't get quick diagnosis. So yeah, I'm Eduardo, I'm from Barcelona. And I'm not a developer. I'm not a developer at all. I'm an engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I kind of work in different projects all the time, really super different projects. One day, I went to the I found the Foldscope. The Foldscope is a microscope that you might have seen that in a TED talk. It's from the Stanford University, and there was this guy who had this amazing idea to make a foldable microscope that costs something around 50 cents, and then you can send it worldwide and everybody would have a microscope and check if they have several things. Because you can check malaria, tuberculosis, a lot of things. But then I thought to myself, yeah, that's amazing, but you still need a doctor. And actually, the doctor is the expensive part. The, a microscope, you can buy them on Amazon. A doctor is, is something that, that needs way more work. So then I thought, OK, let's put some machine learning and solve the part of the doctor put some computer vision and solve the part of the doctor. So I decided to build this whole thing, tiny device, 
which you will blur a drop of blood, and it will tell you if you have malaria or not. So first I started designing the microscope, and I started with the idea of the false scope. And then I check it, I, I started and I got to this. So that's on the right side, that's my screen of my cell phone, and on the left that's supposedly to be blood. So obviously, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did fail, that's horrible. That shouldn't be like this. So the yeah, false scope works like shit. False scope is horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or maybe I don't know how to use it, but I really, really check it, and I was well, yeah, reading the papers and everything. So I keep developing different prototypes. I was checking the internet, uh, lenses with lenses <coughs> of laser pointers. A bit better than this, but nothing that I could work with. And after, I think I, I had like, really like, literally like 17 prototypes. And a friend of mine told me like, hey, don't be stupid. You have like a big project to do. Don't focus on the microscope, so buy a microscope. So I bought this Chinese microscope in Amazon that cost me 15 euros. That was supposed to be 1000x magnification. That was exactly what I needed, so it was amazing. So it's still super cheap. So yeah, for example, that's a, a sample of blood through this microscope. And yeah, it was amazing, as you can compare with the previous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a bit better, right? Actually, it's the same sample. So yeah, the problem that I checked, and it's only 200x. So I cannot work with that. I cannot work with this microscope. It has a sensor of 0.3 megapixels and only 200x. So I cannot even do a digital magnification. That was a problem. As you see, we are a bunch of nerds here. I also did a picture of my screen. That's super nice. You can compare way better. So then I was actually desperate. Like, shit, this thing is never going to work. This, the part of the microscope, I can't forget. And one day, I was at night, and I thought, I told, I told myself, OK, let's solve it. Let's open this microscope and make it work. You, you, you can make it work. You're an engineer. You have been making work a lot of stuff. So then I started thinking of the physical connotations of this project. And a bit of the idea was I, that I got, that was the farther you put your sensor, the bigger the image is. So then I thought, OK, let's change the geometry of the sensor. And I put it a big, so I removed the old sensor, was 0.3 megapixel, and I added one of 8 megapixels, 3, three centimeters farther. So, and with these three centimeters, you can see here, you can see like proper blood. Yeah, that's success. Whenever you have been a whole month working on that, that's success. That's, and yeah, you can see the same, <laughs> the same pixels and the previous ones. So yeah, it's huge, it's huge. So 10 times the group of three is a millimeter. So yeah, it's actually pretty cheap. I pretty cheap, pretty, pretty nice. And yeah, I have a, a banana for the scale here. <laughs> so the second part, how to calculate everything. So I wanted to do it super cheap and super standard. So I decided myself to use a Raspberry Pi, the, the Model 3, the, the last one. It's portable, cheap, and standard. It runs TensorFlow, but it's amazing. It's a nightmare to install TensorFlow there, but like literally a nightmare. It took me three days. <laughs> yeah, it, it just keep crashing all the time, all the time. And you, you keep like, ah, but whatever. But it, wor it works nice. I also, afterwards we're gonna go to the system, but I could run here perfectly the neural networks and also random forest, SVMs, and it worked really, really nice. And I was surprised of the velocity of the, of the Raspberry Pi. It's way, way, way quicker than I was expecting. So finally, here that's malaria, OK? That's a sample of malaria. And as you can see, uh, those dots here in, in the middle, those are the parasites. You can see that there's like a dot, and sometimes that surrounds it a bit. OK, that's like the ring of the parasite. That's the um, reproduction form of the parasite. That's the one that you can find in the blood. So first of all, as I said, you need to put this uh, chemical product to remove the hemoglobin, and you get this. Then I focused on the, to check the dark areas for the reason that I wanted it to be computationally less expensive as possible. I could have 
launch a grid everywhere, use a convolutional neural network to find the um, important places. But I thought that the best thing was to do this kind of grid here and run it all over the grid. It still needs to improve. Okay, that's a project that I, I, I've been working on that for like two months. Still needs to go better. But yeah, basically, I focus on the dark areas to check with a neural network, with a convolutional neural ne network, all the, um, if I find malaria or not. So actually, the, the process is super simple. It's input, we have the picture, we run the CNN, the convolutional neural network, and then try to locate the parasites. Whenever you are running the neural network, you get those samples. Here you don't see that well because it's super huge, they look like nipples, but you can see like the, like the main area here, and there's this tiny thing. That, that's malaria, okay? Actually, all of the four of them, it's malaria in different parts of the grid. I want to locate them all and then decide which one I like the best. Okay, I, I know I could do other strategies, but this one was the one that for me was less computationally expensive and the one that worked the best for all the tests that I did. So after this, you get something like this with all the possible malaria dots. So you have more than one for each dot. So then I use just clustering, easy clustering. I think there's no secret in that. And flop, and I get just one for each one. This one has two, but yeah, mostly that's the idea. Then the problem here is not to locate. So if I fell of one, it's not a problem because if you only have one parasite, you have malaria. So this thing that here you have two or whatever, it's not a big, big deal. As you can see, the metrics, the arrow C curve, looks like if I took it from a book. And the reason for that is that the parasites have a really standard form. They are actually really easy to locate. Something that if you train yourself for two hours, you can locate them by yourself. It's easy. There's the thing with the precision and the recall. I believe that here everybody would think that recall is the most important parameter here. You don't want false negatives. You don't want to tell someone that doesn't have malaria and they have malaria. But here the, it's the opposite. What you want is precision. This the metrics here are for each dot, okay? They're not for the whole picture, it's for each dot. So I don't care missing two points, three points. It's okay, because I want, I'm gonna have 15 points in each picture. But I don't wanna tell someone that doesn't have malaria that has malaria. Because if I have a recall of 0 0.9 almost, that means that if I have a dot, I might say it's malaria, I might say it's not malaria. But if I have two, I will definitely say you have malaria. And, you have, I, I, and, you have, and if I have more, for sure, I would tell you you have malaria. So that's not the problem. The problem is the precision here. So that's, and that this, uh, yeah, 99.3 is still low. So now I'm already working with more data. I'm working with uh, image preprocessing to try to make the malaria look more malaria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it doesn't look that much malaria. The problem with malaria, with this method that, that I'm using, this thick blood method, that it's the standard one, is that you're checking different layers. And, but you can only focus with the microscope one of the layers. So the other layers, you're gonna see them okay, but not that well. So that's the problem. That's why precision is super important because it can confuse other dots that are not malaria with malaria. That's the biggest, the, the biggest problem. And at the end, I want the whole thing to work like a thermometer. I, I would like people to use it as a key, how to say, like, if you check it yourself there in your village, and if you have malaria, you go to a doctor to get proper treatment. So this machine will never tell you uh, what to take, which kind of pills you need, but it will tell, tell you, hey, you, you need to run. Because, yeah, because malaria can kill you in, actually within hours, but the most normal it's within days and weeks. So you, you do want to run. Yeah, as a, the amazing thing, computer vision can diagnose malaria. That's actually something that I'm super happy to be able to say, that something so deadly as malaria can be solved with computer vision. And also the thing that that should improve doctors' life, because doctors should be expend, spending their time 
doing things that brings more value. They cannot spend 10 hours a day checking a microscope. That can be done by a machine. So that makes no sense now in the, the moment that we are living. Now we are living in the moment that we have more, the biggest intelligence ever. And it's our responsibility to use it for good things. So yeah, and the, the, the amazing thing, the whole thing, it cost under 50 euros. That, that's a crazy thing. And I believe that whenever I can 3D print the microscope, it's gonna be even lower. It's gonna be like 40 euros. So that's, for me, from my point of view, it's kind of a revolution that this kind of easy task can be done by a doctor, by a machine, not a doctor. I think that's a game changer. Yeah, it's, it's time to fight malaria. Malaria and other illnesses. So thank you very much. You can check the website of the project. Okay, you can add me on LinkedIn. You can, whatever, you can say me hi. <laughs> and yeah, thank you, thank you very much.